So it's going to be very difficult for the rover to be there because the temperature is going to be around minus 238 degrees. So how difficult will it be and how the rover will manage to, you know, perform all its tasks there? See, one of the reasons why uh, ISRO specifically wanted to land when there is sunrise on moon uh, was for this reason. See, uh, right now uh, in the Chandrayaan-3 mission, uh, technology to keep instruments alive, uh, you know, in the night, power them to keep them warm, doesn't uh, exist. So the lander and the rover both will rely heavily, I mean, rely completely almost on uh, the solar power that they're able to generate and, uh, you know, energy from the sun to not just survive, but also function for the lunar day that they will exist there, which is about 14 Earth days. So they're powered by the sun and uh, all the in situ experiments that they have to carry out will need energy. The instruments will have to be powered. All of this will come from the solar panels that they're packed with this time. The lander has uh, additional surface of solar uh, paneling and the rover is, is a, uh, rover is a small thing. It's about 20, 26, 25 kgs. And compared to the lander, it's much smaller. All this while, even as we speak, it is sitting inside the lander. So what would happen is once the soft landing, uh, you know, uh, is achieved, uh, you will have the rover coming out using a ramp and getting onto the lunar surface. And the, both the lander and the rover, as of today, have about 14 Earth days of life. That is, they are alive between sunrise and sunset on moon. That is one lunar day. And after that, all their instruments get turned off. There is no energy to support them. They just lie there. But ground simulation test that ISRO has carried out back here on Earth, uh, there has some ray of hope where uh, in the labs here, in the simulations, they have found that these instruments uh, could be turned on after uh, you know 14 days of night. And when sun rises again, there is uh, a, a probability of these things getting power again. If all the instruments have survived the you know harsh cold environments uh, on the moon, it should uh, be able to uh, kick, come to life again. But that is a distant possibility. As of now, all the planning is done for the 14 days of life and what work it has to do in those 14 days. But if that happens, yes, uh, they'll get another lunar day. So more data coming in with, from all these six instruments. It is quite exciting in uh, uh, you know in weight as we as we say. So if we have to understand that, how pathbreaking is this experiment and the entire Chandrayaan mission for the for the entire humanity who has been chasing the moon for decades? See, any uh, any space mission is extremely challenging, and uh, especially ones that involve uh, you know reaching another planet or a satellite like a moon or asteroids and trying to land there comes with uh, uh, its own kind of challenges on, and on the moon it's it's particularly more challenging because of the lack of atmosphere and the need to uh, you know uh, bring the lander down using propulsion system as opposed to say on on earth, on earth you could use let's say parachutes which you cannot do on moon so there is a, a, a why this is historic, despite, you know, the fact that everybody says, you know, as early as 1969, yeah. Neil Armstrong and uh, Buzz Aldrin set foot on the moon and thereafter several other Apollo program astronauts have set foot on the moon. So how difficult could it be? But uh, it's, it's, it's not so easy. Otherwise, uh, you know, the failure rate of lunar missions wouldn't be so high. Just to give you a, a number, you know, more than 60-65% of all lunar landing missions have failed historically. Right. Right. And when it comes to general lunar missions, the it's about 40 to 42%. And uh, the only 100% success rate on moon has been the human missions mm -hmm. where people have landed and come back. Yeah. Uh, so moon is a very, very challenging uh, thing to you know conquer. There's a whole uh, list of uh, challenges uh, right. starting from the launch, you know, the kind of trajectory you need to get and uh, how you sort of combat the different influences, the sun, earth, moon, all their influences. How do you combat that and stay on path? How right. do you then capture the lunar uh, orbit? Because, you know, initially in the 50s, even flyby missions, you know, that just had to go past the moon, have yeah. missed yeah. it by miles. 
so uh, and uh, orbiters have sort of not made it uh, which all of the which you know was one of the reasons for theories about whether armstrong landed on moon or not you know right. because so many uh, missions are failing how is it that humans keep going and coming back did it ever really happen or was it propaganda i'm i'm not uh, i'm not mm-hmm. feeding into any of those things right. i'm saying right. why those theories also find some grounding is because landing anything on moon forget landing and going around is a uh, capturing the lunar orbit itself is a challenge and once you've done that which chandrayaan 3 has done mm-hmm. and then you're lowering down towards the lunar surface the other challenges of how to land like i said earlier you know propulsion modules have to be used to you try to control the velocity by firing an engine or in this case two engines right you just recently saw how russians failed to capture the last orbit they were supposed to get into a pre pre landing yeah. orbit which they couldn't succeed yeah. in so it is it is quite uh, challenging but that's what makes it very exciting and space is is, is really not uh, uh, you know forgiving at all and yeah. moon more so from breaking news detailed analysis in depth interviews and explainers follow the times of india subscribe to our youtube channel Don't forget to like our videos and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest.